Okay, gonna do this one more time using the hand to charge the unit. See how close I come. I've done this twice, and I'm gonna do it one more time. So we're low on charge, probably a pound and a half, two pounds. Uh, high superheat, uh, subcools virtually nothing, a high ambient here. Uh, I'll show you what the ambient is in a sec. Uh, so the suction pressure is too low also. Okay, you can see the ambient's 96.8. Uh, 82 coming out. We run 450 uh, foot per ton on this thing. We've got a split of about 16. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cover up the gauge set. Okay, gauge set's covered up, not looking at any temperatures of anything. Remember, this is a uh, fixed orifice device, so it's critically charged. I'm just going to simply hold my hand right here at the suction line at the outdoor unit until I think the charge is right. Okay, and I'm going to begin charging now. That's doing it by hand. I did not look at the gauge set. I just pulled the cover off. Uh, of course, our subcool is a lot lower than it was. Not sure why that is. But our superheat is almost exactly what the uh, target superheat is supposed to be on it. Okay. Uh, well, let's take a look at the split across the coil. Okay, 22.5. Uh, about right for this kind of coil. So, how can I be accurate just by putting my hand there? Well, just remember, guys, now, I didn't fake this or anything. This is this, the way I showed it is exactly how it worked. Uh, I'm waiting for wet gas. You will feel it in the pipe. Your weight, your fingers are way faster than the temperature probe. You'll feel it way before the temperature probe does. What am I doing when I put my hand here? Now most most people tell you you can't do this. And it's not easy to do. Remember now I've got almost 40 years in this thing now. So uh, I can usually do it. But what I'm waiting for with my hand is wet gas. Remember, when the gas is coming back and it's being superheated, it's still not all boiled off. The uh, refrigerant inside these lines is, is not just running through the lines. It's boiling, it's bubbling about, there's a little bit of oil in it. Uh, it's really turbulent. And so there's going to be a fog. And that fog's going to consist of un evaporated refrigerant and some oil. Okay, when it comes down this pipe and you start to feel that wet gas, that's when your superheat's pretty close to being right on the money. Now remember, you can't do this unless everything's right. Plenty of airflow, uh, no dirty coil, things like that. Uh, the machine has to be correct. In fact, this is one way I oftentimes would tell if I had a plug coil or a plug filter or something, so I'd go out and check this and say, no, this isn't right. It's not feeling right. It's too cold. So, if you can feel the wet gas, you can do that. Uh, I could say, like the Mythbusters say, don't try this at home. Uh, which probably will anyway. Uh, it is not easy to do. It takes a very long time to get this figured out. So, uh, you know, I do it I'm doing it here just to show it can be done, uh, but there's nothing magic about it. Do I charge this way? You know, virtually never. I don't, I may block off my gauges and I may block off the uh, scale, but when I'm done, I check super heat, I check sub cool, I check the pressures, and I check the amount of refrigerant I put in. I'm just saying this is a way that you can charge, and it is for pretty accurate, but only if you've been around this for a very long time. It takes a lot of practice to get that right. So anyway, that's charging by, well, what they used to call beer can cold and all of this, that crap. Um, 
One of the things it won't tell you, well, it actually will, but if it's overcharged, you're going to get that beer can cold, but it's going to go all the way to the compressor. You'll have condensate all over the compressor where the suction line comes in, and so that's what's going to make a difference on it. Uh, I oftentimes do charge this way just for the fun of it, and then I double check with how much refrigerant I put in, my super sub fuel, and probably target super heat. If this is a TXV controlled machine, uh, I can tell if the TXV's off, but I'll tell you what, I very seldom find a TXV that's out of whack. It either works or it doesn't work. So, uh, for TXVs, I use the subtool. Subtool is the best way for TXVs every time. But anyway, uh, that's charging by your hand.